What's going on guys? My name is Danny Gutierrez and thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Total Fight Mike. Uh, remember guys, April 25th there will be another Pro-Am uh, card for Total Fight Challenge at Cicero at Cicero Stadium. It's, this will be April 25th on a Saturday, so uh, save the date, save the date. Uh, Total Fight Challenge again will be there April 25th on a Saturday at Cicero Stadium in Cicero, Illinois, and it will, it will be a Pro-Am card. So speaking of pros, this week, past weekend we had UFC, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we had UFC on ESPN Plus, and uh, the main event was indeed uh, Paul Felder versus, excuse me guys, uh, Paul Felder versus Dan Hooker. Uh, it was a high level striking lightweight bout as a lot of people anticipated that it would be. Uh, a lot of guy, uh, a lot of people picked Paul, Paul Felder the win. And according to the numbers, I think he out, he did outstrike Dan Hooker, but it was a very close fight. I personally myself had uh, Paul Felder winning, and it was pretty interesting too because I actually thought that uh, Paul Felder would be the one to take the fight to the ground because he has finished a lot of his fights via ground and pound. You look at his Charles Oliveira fight; it finished uh, Charles Oliveira in the guard with uh, elbows. His other victory against Stevie Ray again that was due to elbows and ground and pound. Uh, he just has a phenomenal, very underrated uh, wrestling and devastating ground and pound. So uh, it actually looked as if Dan Hooker was working his angles and moving laterally very well, but there were certain times where he was throwing uh, his straight punches and throwing his kicks at a little bit of a closer distance, and maybe he should have against Paul Felder because Paul Felder's got these uh, looping hooks that he has, and he actually, Paul Felder actually, had actually landed some... Uh, pretty decent spinning back kicks to the body and some pretty decent uh, body strikes some pretty decent leg kicks too they were both trading some pretty decent leg kicks especially Dan Hooker actually Dan Hooker was actually lighting up the legs of uh, Paul Felder very well and he actually uh, he didn't abandon it he did not abandon it excuse me but uh, he uh, he didn't necessarily capitalize on it as well as he should have but Dan Hooker did get the uh, split decision nod over in uh, Auckland New Zealand over uh, Paul Felder Paul Felder said that it might be his last fight, and at 35 years old, I mean, can't necessarily blame him. Although you look at guys like uh, Yoel Romero, who are 10 plus years, around about 10 plus years his senior, and they're still doing it, man. Um, so it really is up to Paul Felder. He's a pretty talented guy outside of uh, the UFC and outside of being a UFC fighter. Uh, his commentary is uh, actually pretty good. I personally like it, so I think he's a uh, pretty. Uh, intelligible uh, commentator himself so that's something that he uh can pursue as a alternate avenue to fighting so it would be pretty interesting pretty interesting to see him uh continue his career on the booth if he doesn't continue fighting but if he does continue fighting it'd be kind of cool to see who he is up against next for somebody like dan hooker uh he called out justin gaethje uh I honestly feel like that's a really bad matchup for Dan Hooker, especially with the amount of times that he was hit against Paul Felder. I feel like one strike or two strikes from Justin Gaethje would put uh, somebody, anybody, away. And uh, hopefully he gets that fight. But I've actually been seeing some uh, MMA news that's uh, been reading that uh, Justin Gaethje and Conor McGregor is trying to actually be set up for the summer. I've actually also seen some articles reading that Floyd and mcgregor have agreed to a rematch but uh i mean you never know in this game uh you never know in the sport excuse me um but we'll see and actually to flip it over to boxing this weekend february 22nd the ring Mag ring magazine and lineal heavyweight champion tyson fury was going to rematch uh, the wbc heavyweight champion deontay wilder and uh rematch that uh it was a fight that was held was it December December of 2018 and uh that fight was uh in my opinion it was pretty one-sided uh it felt like Tyson Fury was outboxing Deontay Wilder from the outside and utilizing his his footwork and his head movement and his faking and fainting and trying to get Deontay Wilder to react and uh both gentlemen were actually a little bit lighter in that last fight but it was actually Deontay Wilder that scored the knockdowns in the first fight in this fight, coming into it, uh, Tyson Fury was predicting a second-round knockout. Uh, he switched camps with his uh, trainer, Ben Davison. He went over from the U.K. to train over at uh, Kronk Gym at the East Coast, uh, where guys like uh, 
the Motor City, the Motor City Cobra, Tommy Hearns, and guys like Lennox Lewis have actually uh, made a name for themselves off of a, a trainer by the name of Emmanuel Stewart. His nephew, Sugar Hill Stewart, is actually the one who was cornering Tyson Fury in the fight of uh, Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury put it to him. Tyson Fury put it to Deontay Wilder. He knocked him down once in the third round. He wanted to knock him out in the second round. But he actually was putting it to him. He was pushing him around. He came in at 270, 273 pounds. And uh, the first fight, uh, both guys were considerably lighter in the first fight. And this fight, both guys were heavier. Uh, I believe uh, De uh, Deontay Wilder came in at 243. And... Uh, Tyson Fury weighed in, like I said, at uh, 273. And uh, Tyson Fury really wanted to uh, De uh, Deontay Wilder to, to wear the weight, excuse me, to wear the weight of uh, his newfound frame working at, uh, working with uh, Sugar Hill Stewart at Cron at, over at the Cronk Gym. So realistically, Deontay Wilder is entitled to a rematch. Uh, he was ultimately stopped in the seventh and... Uh, uh, while the referee had his uh, back turned to the corner of Deontay Wilder while he was waving off the fight, that corner of Deontay Wilder actually threw in the towel. And there is a little bit of controversy surrounding that. Uh, Deontay Wilder said that he was going in uh, with a leg injury. He said that what he wore on the way to the walkouts was uh, a little bit heavy on his legs. So... I mean, these are things that can be fabricated as excuses, but only Deontay Wilder knows uh, what happened with Deontay Wilder the night of February 22nd. But uh, it does sound like he is going to exercise that uh, rematch clause, and uh, he will be rematching uh, Tyson Fury. But, uh, I mean, both, or excuse me, all of the heavyweight belts, all of the major titles, uh, the WBC, WBO, IBF, uh, IBO, the uh, WBC, the Ring Magazine and the uh, Lineal Heavyweight Championship are all held by two gentlemen combined, and that's Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. And both guys are from the UK, and both guys are heavyweights, and a fight between those two is inevitable. Because in my opinion, especially in boxing, you want to have one guy have all of those belts to be the actual prestigious, the most prestigious uh, heavyweight boxing champion. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode of the Total Fight, Mike. Remember, April 25th, the Total Fight Challenge will have another event, a Pro-Am card this time, uh, hosted by Joel Goitia. Thank you guys so much. And everybody at the Cicero Stadium, thank you for having us in Cicero, Illinois. Uh, make sure you drop a like and subscribe, uh, and I will see you guys in the sequel. Bye, everybody. Oh, don't forget, actually, this weekend we're actually supposed to have ESPN+, Plus, which is... Uh, uh, Davison Figueiredo versus uh, Joseph Benavidez, and that will be an interesting fight. That is for the vacant flyweight title. Uh, hopefully, Joseph Benavidez will get uh, his uh, long-awaited uh, UFC title because he either had to fight guys that were way too heavy for him or he actually had to fight uh, Demetrius, Mighty Mouse, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, who's one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters uh, of all time. Uh, Davison Figueiredo only has one loss, and that was the Juicy A4 Omega. Uh, since then, he's submitted guys like Tim Elliott, and he's on a two-fight winning streak. So we'll see what he could do uh, against Joseph Benavides, who's a very long-time championship veteran. So thank you guys, again, thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in to this episode of the Total Fight Mike. This time, I will see you guys in the sequel. Bye, everybody.